You know all the mafia horror stories. The Italian mafia ruthlessly shaking down small business owners. The South American drug cartels brutally executing their rivals. The predatory organ smugglers who will steal your kidney right from your body. You've heard it all, right? We'll see. You're probably less familiar with the secretive, shady underworld of the Asian mafias, but these criminal enterprises have centuries of experience in violence, crime, and deception, and can give all those other gangs a run for their money. Of the two most famous, though, the Japanese Yakuza and the Chinese Triad. Which is the deadlier mafia? What exactly is organized crime, anyway? The simple definition from the Encyclopedia Britannica is a complex of highly centralized enterprises set up for the purpose of engaging in illegal activities. These illegal activities can be anything from cargo theft, fraud and robbery, to kidnapping and demanding protection payments, to the sale of drugs, prostitution, loan sharking and gambling. Organized crime is in the business of profiting off the strong consumer demand for illegal goods and services. But if the gangs are just giving people what they want, what's the problem? Well, according to the FBI, the vast sums of money involved can compromise legitimate economies and have a direct impact on governments through the corruption of public officials. Plus, there's the problem of their often brutal and violent methods. Threats, blackmail, kidnapping, violence, even murder are just the costs of doing business for the mafia. A group with as few as six members can be considered a criminal enterprise by the FBI, but the most successful groups have thousands of members. The number of criminal organizations in the US exploded in the 20th century, thanks in large part to the prohibition of alcohol in the 1920s, and they've been flourishing ever since. Organized crime may be relatively new in the States, but Europe and Asia have always had a thriving organized crime culture. The Sicilian Mafia and the Japanese Yakuza have been in operation for centuries. The Italian Mafia is much more familiar to the Westerners than the Japanese Yakuza because the Mafia has extensive international operations, while the Yakuza and other Asian Mafias have tended to contain their operation to their homelands, although that's changing in recent years with the rise of globalization. To figure out which is the deadlier mafia, let's explore the fascinating history of the Asian mafias, look into their brutal crimes and money-making schemes, and meet some of the former members to get the inside scoop on the Japanese Yakuza and the Chinese Triad. First up, let's take a look at the infamous Chinese Triads. The modern Chinese Triad gang can trace their roots back to the 17th century when groups of Hongmen people joined together in an unsuccessful attempt to overthrow the Qing dynasty and restore the Ming dynasty. The term triad refers to any number of different secret Chinese societies that have emerged in the last few centuries, with missions as wide-ranging as starting rebellions to profiting off of illegal gambling. In 1911, the Chinese Nationalist Party would partner with a secret triad society and use them to attack their political enemies and suppress union uprisings. When the communists came to power in 1949 and cracked down on secret societies, the triads fled to British-controlled Hong Kong. By the 1960s, there were more than 60 triad gangs in Hong Kong, and it was estimated that one in every six people was a gang member. When the British took a hands-off approach to policing gangs within Kowloon Walled City, a walled-in slum area within Hong Kong, Kowloon became a hotbed for drugs, crime, and gangs. Today, there are up to 100,000 triad members in Hong Kong alone. The triads are first and foremost a drug cartel. A huge portion of their revenue comes from the trafficking of cocaine, heroin, and opium. Like any modern criminal enterprise, though, the triads are well diversified. They have their hands in all kinds of illegal activities, from arms smuggling and home invasion to credit card fraud, counterfeiting, and white-collar crime. They also dabble in loan sharking, gambling, prostitution, and they even profit from trafficking endangered plants and animals. The triads are also increasingly involved in human trafficking. The US estimates that up to 100,000 illegal aliens are smuggled into the country by the triads each year, and that they're then forced to work off their debt to the gangsters with years of servitude. While the Triads are a Chinese gang based mainly in Hong Kong, they have connections all over the world. When the Communists chased the Triads out of China, those who didn't flee to Hong Kong ended up in Taiwan, Southeast Asia, and even the US. Between their international cells and their connection to the Italian cartels, the Triads are quickly becoming an international criminal organization. All gangs value loyalty, but it takes on a special meaning in the Chinese Triads, where family relationships are a key part of the organization's hierarchy. Membership in the triads is hereditary, meaning a family connection can guarantee you a place in the gang. 
Even non-related gang members are taught to consider their fellow gang members as blood brothers, and there's a duty of mutual help between gang members and even different gang factions. In a nod to their secret society roots, new triad members must undergo an initiation, which includes swearing the 36 oaths and pledging loyalty to their fellow triads. While there are countless examples of the typical violence you'd expect to find in the world of drug dealing and petty crime, the triads have also been known to perpetrate acts of violence out of a sense of patriotism. Sometimes this means acting against the establishment, but just as often it might mean the triads partnering with the rulers and the police, if that's where the profit is. In 2019, crowds of citizens returning from a political protest were attacked and beaten by mobs of triads as the police looked on or even assisted the attackers. One protester was quoted as saying, the police and the triads now rule together. Li Fai Ping was born in the corrupt, violent slums of Kowloon Walled City. He was raised by his uncle, and he was picked on constantly growing up. He joined the triads as a teen, seeking to fit in and end all the bullying, and soon found himself with money, power, and of course, drugs. In his decade with the gang, he recruited new gang members, sold drugs, and even worked as a pimp. He went to prison on 10 different occasions for robbery, extortion, and drug offenses. After a failed suicide during his last stint in prison, he decided to turn his life around. He got clean, got a job, and started volunteering at the same treatment center that had helped him. He met his future wife, got married, and had a son, and spent the next 30 years helping other young triads and addicts leave crime behind. In 2012, he became the first former triad to receive a gold medal from the government in recognition of his services. There's no doubt that the Chinese triads are a brutal and deadly mafia, but you just might be shocked to hear about the brutality of the Japanese Yakuza. The Japanese Yakuza is one of the world's oldest organized crime outfits, having been founded in Japan nearly 400 years ago by members of the Burakumin class, the non-humans who were below even the lowest class of Japanese hierarchical society. They partnered with fugitives from the higher class as well as gamblers. Gambling was and still is illegal in Japan, and began participating in typical gang activities, extortion, theft, and turf wars. The Japanese rulers even established official sanctioned bosses to lead the gangs, hoping to quell the violence from the gang wars. The modern Yakuza have made efforts to at least appear legitimate, with front companies, fancy offices, corporate logos, and even employee pension plans. The Yakuza specialize in high-level financial fraud, but they dabble in other illegal activities too. They extort money from corporations and use it to bribe politicians and law enforcement to turn a blind eye to their activities, or even influence things in their favor. In recent years, as the world becomes more and more connected, the Yakuza have branched out and begun investing their illegal profits in international real estate on the west coast of the US, in Hawaii, and in South Korea. One of their favorite investments are luxury golf courses. What we call the Yakuza is not one centralized criminal enterprise, but rather a collection of many distinct but connected gangs collectively referred to as the Yakuza. Just a single gang in the Yakuza collective, the Yamaguchi Gumi, includes nearly half of all active Yakuza members. The Yamaguchi Gumi won the number two spot on the Fortune 5 list of the world's biggest mafia outfits, raking in more than $6 billion of illegal revenue every year. Loyalty is a central tenet of all organized crime outfits, but the Yakuza take it even more seriously than most gangs do. One high-ranking defector who we'll meet later on has said being a Yakuza is not like working for a company or having a career, it's a way of life. He goes on to explain that joining the Yakuza was not about money. Instead, he and his fellow recruits thought they were being the ideal macho Japanese male, putting our lives at risk for our cause. There are many ways that Yakuza members can demonstrate their loyalty to the gang. Elaborate full-body tattoos done in the traditional hand-poked style are a popular way for the Yakuza to prove their loyalty and toughness. Hand-poked tattooing is much more painful than tattoos done with a modern gun, and many members take the full-body part literally, even having extremely sensitive areas like their genitals tattooed. Yakuza men might remove their shirts when playing cards together to display their ink, but in public they're careful to cover up their tattoos, 
as it's a surefire way to let civilians know that you're a gangster. If full body tattooing seems crazy to you, just wait until you hear about how the Yakuza apologize to their boss. If a Yakuza member displeases his boss, he'll perform the traditional Yubitsumi ritual, cutting off their little finger at the last joint and presenting the severed finger to their boss as an apology. This practice originated in early Yakuza history, and the idea was that the missing digit would weaken the disgraced member's sword grip, making them more dependent on the gang for protection. The Yakuza actually make an effort to garner goodwill with the general public. In 1995, after the Kobe earthquake, and again after the 2011 tsunami, the Yamaguchi Gumi donated food and supplies to survivors. In recent years, though, the Yakuza's traditional code of sparing civilians from violence has been continually violated by a small but particularly brutal gang in the Yakuza Collective. The Kudo Kai has only around 600 members, but their recent string of violent crimes have taken a high toll on civilians. Yakuza have been linked to the violent murder of the head of a fisherman's cooperative, to a brazen hand grenade attack on the Chinese consulate, and to a petrol bomb attack on the home of the country's prime minister. And these are just a few of the endless tales of brutality and violence under the reign of the Yakuza. To really understand what it's like to live inside the Yakuza hierarchy, let's meet Takashi Nakamoto, a former high-ranking Yakuza gangster. He joined the gang as a young man looking for a sense of belonging, and he spent more than three decades working his way up from foot soldier to senior member of the notorious Kudokai Yakuza faction. His work for the Mafia landed him in jail numerous times, including an eight-year stint for a violent attack on a business that had dared to open without the Yakuza's blessing. During yet another prison sentence, Nakamoto learned that his boss had died. That, combined with his nagging conscience about increasingly violent acts committed by his gang, prompted him to turn his life around. He was released from prison and was fortunate to find a job as a noodle chef. His telltale missing pinky doesn't hold him back in the kitchen, but it does make him stand out as a former gang member. The odds are stacked against people like me, he says. It's not as if I stopped being a gangster and then just became like everyone else. I'm not starting from zero, I'm starting from minus. So Japanese Yakuza or Chinese Triad, which is the deadlier mafia? There's certainly no denying that both are brutal and powerful criminal enterprises. Even though recent events have violated the tradition, the Yakuza are not usually known for involving civilians in their violence. The Triads are a more loosely associated group of gangs, and violence between Triad gangs is common. Their violence often spills over into the public, and sometimes citizens are even directly targeted. That, plus their dealings in human trafficking, make them the deadlier and more nefarious mafia. That said, as governments crack down on illegal gang activities, mafias will have to adapt or die, and the Yakuza, with their focus on high-tech, white-collar crime and recent efforts to at least appear legitimate, seem much better prepared to succeed in the future of organized crime. Only time will tell who will truly be the deadlier mafia, but either way, we suggest you avoid getting on the wrong side of any gangster. If you're looking for more grisly mafia details, be sure and check out our other videos, like this one called Crazy Italian Mafia Crimes, or you might like this other video instead.